Thank you, Tom. The Australian Government Photographic Service, otherwise known as AUSPIC, is the official government photographer. It was established in 1988, coinciding with the opening of Parliament House by the then Prime Minister, the Honourable Bob Hawke. AUSPIC takes official photographs for parliamentarians undertaking official business and photographs of significant events in the life of Parliament, including parliamentarians' official portraits, parliamentary proceedings, including opening and closing of Parliament, state occasions and other ceremonies, speeches and question time, ministry and cabinet business and group portraits, the House of Representatives, Senate and Joint House Committees, the swearing in of parliamentarians and ministers, the Australian Parliament House building, including construction, maintenance, the architect and gardens, special events, including the Parliament Open House, Open Day, election campaigns and presentations, and visits to Australia by foreign dignitaries and overseas visits by the Prime Minister, as requested by the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet's Protocol and International Visits Division. AUSPIC has been the responsibility of a number of Commonwealth <coughs> agencies since 1988. Since 2013, the management of this service has been the responsibility of the Department of Parliamentary Services. This includes the management of the preservation and access of these images. The AUSPIC archive consists of both analogue film and digital files. The creation of born digital content began in 2000. However, the generation of both analogue and digital images coexisted in many instances until about 2007. From 2008, all images in the archive have been born digital. The digital archive consists of approximately 1.5 million images and grows daily. It is worth noting that the bulk of the pre-digital AUSPIC photographs has been transferred to the National Archives of Australia. The AUSPIC collection has historic significance as it is a valuable record of the life and work of the Australian Parliament. The images are also a valuable record of Australian Parliament House as a working building and an icon of Australian democracy. The Department of Parliamentary Services recognises that the AUSPIC images are a unique and valuable asset. To ensure they are managed to a high standard, are preserved for long-term access and can be easily discoverable to potential users, a project is underway to curate, catalogue and ingest the images into a digital asset management system. The AUSPIC content migration project commenced in 2016. The project team sits within the Design Integrity and Parliament House Special Collections section. The team selects images for inclusion into the digital asset management system based on photographic merit, for example, the quality of image composition, historical significance and the uniqueness of the image. So the many duplicates or derivatives will not be included. The project aims to curate, catalogue, archive and ingest into the digital asset management system over 50,000 images from the historic collection and commence cataloguing, curating and archiving new photographs on the day they were taken so users have immediate access to the images. To date, the project team has focused on preparing images from the following categories for ingestion. Official photographs of parliamentarians dating back to the 30th Parliament, a best of selection for each year from 1996 to 2015, images of parliamentary committees between 1996 and 2015, selected overseas visits by Australian Prime Ministers between 1996 and 2015, images of newly sworn ministries and significant group portraits of parliamentarians, and the best of individual Prime Ministers, including the best of the Honourable John Howard collection. The AUSPIC project is an exciting opportunity for the Department of Parliamentary Services to preserve these valuable assets and make them easily discoverable to potential users. It will showcase the workings of Parliament House, the senators and members who have served, and document important historic events. This collection will be shared with the Australian public and enhance research and study into the life and work of the Australian Parliament. My colleague, Mr David Foote, Senior Photographer Ospic will now showcase a selection of images from the Howard Government. Oh, that's it. Thanks. 
Afternoon, everybody. I'm David. Just to give you a quick talk. Um, Tom set this dilemma. He wanted 10 images. When you consider those, you know, in a year, there's 32 million seconds, really 10 images is less than one second of exposed time. So it's one of those things, where do I start? And it's like these two Korean um, gentlemen staring in through the window. I'm a watcher of Mr. Howard. <laughs> Not just, yeah, so. North Korea. No, yeah, North Koreans. Yeah, I was going to say, we were stuck in no man's land. One of these, the adventures of, you know, this is like Mr. Howard's life in pictures. Um, yeah, so it's one of these, you know, the whole thing was like a big adventure at times. You're off in these countries. You know, it's a hard thing, you know. Photography at times, trying to get the perfect picture. You, you're running around, trying to catch what you want to see, but then the Prime Minister would turn the other direction, or someone would walk across and um, so yeah at times it was hard work but often you're rewarded with these unique type of pics that happened so um, just going to go back a bit this is a couple of years later this is September 10 uh, Mr. Howard's uh, first trip uh, one of the trips across America and this is just one of these pics that seems to fall into place a bit more atmosphere I think of in the collection we should have a special chapter on just umbrellas because we have that, in fact, I think in this thinking of it, there's another picture with an umbrella in Mr. Howard. And yeah, this was leaving the Pentagon. So the next day, the whole story ended up being an entirely different story to uh, what was happening here. Oops. Um, yeah, this is the image that's in the collection. Often, the only way you'd often see these cities we went to with Mr. Howard was in his morning walk. So yeah, it was one of these things he would do three, four kilometers. The poor photographers would probably do six or eight running around in circles, <laughs> you know, down, waiting, you know, anticipating things. And he had other, you know, other staff, his protection detail kind of just at that right timing being in your way. And um, yeah, so I think it, Mr. Howard, obviously, had to see a picture towards the end, what he thought was a simple walk. But, yeah. uh, this is, I think, 2001. This is a day or two before one of the, uh, the federal election was called. I just wanted to bring to attention, it's not just the people that are in pictures, it's what else is there. I'm looking at the, uh, your chairs you have in the, uh, your Chesterfields, the Menzies desk, it was pride of place at the time. Uh, the Ch Churchill painting, which I think now is in the, um, the speaker's office, and uh, yeah, how things you know change. Often there was often you'd be ahead of the prime minister at all times. You're always watching for opportunities, and I think one day in Washington, um, the PM decided to walk to another location, and it was just all the Secret Service, bus of the Australian team, and uh, yeah, just. You know, waiting at the traffic lights. The president must be coming with all those. Yeah. yeah. So there was, as I said, there was often these pictures that just seemed to fall into place where um, the timing was right. And even uh, I think we were in New York um, in January after September 11, and it was just one of these things. The light, the TV lights get turned out, and there was just one light on Mr. Howard, and it gave this you know fantastic to me, light and a unique image. It just seemed to fall into place for two, three seconds before the other lights were turned on again and the image disappeared. So, uh, and there's the Menzies desk again. Ah. <coughs> see, and obviously Mr. Howard wouldn't have been able to see. Mr. Bush was at the other end of the room and all the media were up one end of the room and as I was just walking around, um, Condoleezza Rice was just sitting on the desk and I kind of thought, do I take a picture? And she kind of looked at me, kind of having this dare, do you take the picture or not? And I kind of thought, I'll take the picture and see what happens after, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so it puts that connection between Menzies, Mr. Howard and the desk. So yeah, the desk can have its own history as well. I often laugh at the uh, images in the background of, you know, of Mr. Howard's life at the time. When you zoom in on them, you can see, you know, pictures of the time that uh, are leaders, you know, prominent leaders of the day. Yep. Yeah, okay, now we're coming into 2004. 
obviously Mr. Howard must have been worried about, you know, what do I do if I lose the next election? Do I, you know, um, yeah, alternative jobs? But um, Josh Friedenberg was doing a fundraising thing. I think Josh at the time was a staffer in your office. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah, now the treasurer. I'm not sure. But Josh, when I passed this image on to him, he said, my hair was never the same. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, yeah, see, Gary's even noticed that as well. Yeah, so it's one of these odd images we have in the collection that, um, yeah, you look back and, you know, how things change. Um, Mr. Howard's trip to America again, and, you know, another 2004 pick with some TV star, I think, at the time. Yeah, so... <laughs> I'm just, uh, how, did the, how, was the, how was that, Mr. Howard, meeting Arnie? It was good? Yeah. Sorry. How, how was Mr. Mr. Schwarzenegger, how was he when you met uh, him? Schwarzenegger? Yeah. Um, muscle. Muscle, <laughs> ah. <laughs> Strong handshake? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, I can match him on that, but he's pretty muscly. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He, he thought we were pretty good. Oh, good, okay. Yeah. And here we go, but this was during the election campaign. I think, are you a St. George fan? I think this was out at the St. George Leagues Club. I think there was a, a breakfast on... Um, yeah, it would have been the grand final. Grand final <laughs> breakfast. Grand final yeah. yeah. Okay, I, think if, I think that was one week. Was AFL on we the week after? Oh, good. Okay. So That's some... one thing we And here was the result of the, um, the 2004, the, the, the ministry at the time. Uh, you know, some of these people are in this room today. Mr. Ruddock's hooking up. Yep. So, uh, yeah. But you kind of think, oh, arranging all these pictures, they're not a simple kind of thing. You just stand there. But it was trying to get people in position and trying to get rid of hangers-on in the background. There was always someone kind of uh, photobombing in that. Uh, some images, this is Bandarache, so obviously that year they had the Boxing Day, Tasami went through the Indian Ocean and in February Prime Minister Howard went up to Bandarache to have a look at the, um, what was happening there. But For a photographer there's hundreds of people, there was lots of defence people. That, as much as you're trying to get a picture, you just want to get this clear image of the destruction and Mr Howard. So. But later on the day Mr. Howard uh, went for a flight in one of the, the Navy uh, Sea King helicopters, which, yeah, which this particular one, Shark 2, became another two months later, became another story of when it crashed in uh, Nias Island, uh, killing nine people. And so it led into that other story, you know, that was, this is February, this is April, in a couple of days, um, yeah, a week later, I guess, that... Um, the bodies arrived back in Sydney. So, one thing about you know today's cameras, you know, they also focus on that. Often you become, it becomes quite emotional, and it's often quite good. You can use the benefit of a autofocus camera to kind of continue working as your emotion takes place. So, it's, yeah. Another. Um, picture you kind of think you know there's a lot of organization that went into this so in Parliament House it was the Queen's visit in 2006 and just when you think you've got everything they're about to bring the Queen up and someone else said we can't do the picture yet there was two ministers missing so yeah they had to race back into the hall the great hall and find two ministers and kind of drag them we won't mention names or uh, yeah for your eyes on, we can tell the story out of, yeah. And eventually we got the two ministers and, um, yeah, the, they rolled the Queen into position. We took the picture and um, it was all done. So I guess every picture has that thousand words, you know, plus the stories that go behind. Um, in question time in 2006, just watching, and Mal Bruff came up and spoke to the PM. It's just one of these odd images and it's one, probably the first image I actually put metadata on, as I, you know, I thought it was a marker in time for it. And he was talking about Steve Irwin had died, and that's why, you know, it wasn't until the PM stood up and made mention that he had died, so... Um, 
the, um, yeah. <laughs> there was certain events, you know, you, you go to these, um, these great big meetings overseas. I've got a cartoon someplace that says, you know, might spend a, mil a trillion dollars and have a photo taken. And um, it's these things, you'd be, for a photographer, you'd be waiting there, be, you, know, you might be there three, four hours before you take your first image. And yeah, these images, just to see what the fancy dress was, and the, the dress, um, it was always quite interesting that, um, yeah. And I remember doing, in, um, when Mr. Howard was hosting APEC, and it was down under the Opera House steps where all the, um, the, the guests of government were all putting their Akubras, and um, you know, they never used the Akubras because it was gonna block the sun off the faces, so they missed out on that part. But yeah, you kind of, you look back at these, pictures and uh, you make you, this was another one during APEC, um, Mr. Howard and Mr. Bush having a cruise on Sydney Harbour. My phone kept going and if you look behind you can actually see um, there's a boat filled with protection, there's a, like an SAS squad and there was a couple of them around. There was also a boat with media and my phone kept uh, two or three times, you can feel it vibrating and eventually there was this message team, get your ugly face out the way, and it was one of the photographers on this boat, that was the thing, as the boat's kind of uh, bobbed up and down, yeah, so, um, but it was just these opportunities I was given over the years, you know, in the end, it would have been a quarter of my life was spent, you know, following Mr. Howard, so, um, so APEC was a bit free trade and cheap umbrellas, yeah, so. I think um, Jamie Fox, I don't know who was the heavy-handed one with the umbrella, Mr. Howard. I don't know if it was Jamie. You? Yeah. You, I think you were given the first one and uh, it went too far and broke. So I think the two people in the foreground are trying to kill it off. And I think Jamie again, Jamie Fox and uh, Mr. Howard are trying to, the umbrella has done the same thing again. And uh, so, yeah, you can see what free trade is good for. And... Mr. Howard, you know, all these morning walks, obviously, you know, as I said, it was hard work, it was lots of exercise, and you kind of think Mr. Howard must just want his own time, but so he could gain his thoughts, but in reality, especially during election campaigns, it was probably far from it. You had all these different competing protesters wanting um, to get their facts forward, and um, yeah. I don't know how they got to what wind of it, but obviously they've just turned up within minutes of Mr. Howard going for a walk and tailed on behind. And I guess every um, story comes, a chapter comes to an end. And this is in 2007, obviously, you know, you were walking out uh, the Wentworth, you know, a place we've been many times before. And obviously you're trying to get a different picture. I think this is one of my other colleagues shot this one. And he went across the road and just did the wide, you know, setting the scene of what um, happened that night and like the farewell pic um, for Mr. Howard. But to this day, you kind of think that's where Mr. Howard would finish, but he still turns up in the occasional image. There's often events we do. And um, yeah, the, that was the, uh, the Hawk Memorial Service. And it was one of these things you ask who can be in the picture, and someone said he didn't want to be in it. But then as he walked out, he said, where are we doing this picture? And I kind of thought, ah, oh. he was the first ex former prime minister, right? So I managed, everyone else kind of agreed to it. And yeah, it just it's a picture, you know, for the you know, significance of the, um, yeah, of the history of the event. How are we going there for time, Tom? Three minutes. Three minutes, okay. A couple of quick other pics. Uh, do you want to talk? Tom, he's good. Just a couple of others. Just every time you go to take a great picture, there's people get mesmerised with the personalities. So yeah. So every so often you get these people with funny looks behind, kind of watching, mesmerised by what's happening. And obviously, Tom's decided to become the photo bomber that night at the Queen's um, yeah, uh, dinner. So, yeah. Have you seen that one, Tom? No. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so it's like that handshake. Yeah. So, and that's it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Please, please wait.
Liz, can, can I ask you, um, so in my work I'm just finishing off a book on Philip Maxwell Ruddock and when we were looking for photographs, potential cover photographs, we found that there were many hundreds because there's group photos, individual photos. So is the work you are doing with the collection now to try to make the database a little tighter? Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, the idea is to be able to condense it down to the quality photos, remove all the duplicates, and then have a database that will be easily accessible to anyone who's interested, whether they're within Parliament or at home, to be able to go in um, and get those images and download them. So it's definitely about curating them into a smaller subset and making them more accessible. So if I'm searching it... Now, can I search the collection at home or do I have to come to...? Eventually, you will be able to. Okay. So that's our ultimate goal, is once the digital asset management system is implemented, that you would be able, through the APH website, be able to do all of that searching at home. And when I'm thinking about a photograph, and this one's not among them, um, is it the date? Is it the... What's, just give us a hint. Yeah. So I've heard you today and I think, oh, in a year's time, I wouldn't mind having a look. What's the best way for me to interrogate the database to get something Certainly. out of it? Um, well, by the date, by the photographer, by the subject, by um, we've got a subject thesaurus, so that would be linking up to certain names, certain events, as well as some free text that we might put in if you know that it was on a specific occasion. So we're actually with the metadata schema we've used, it's quite comprehensive, and we'll be able to um, pick up on a numerous, but I would say most people probably search by the, the subject of who the photo was taken of, but also the date, the occasion, if that's known, or if it was more of an interest in just having a look at certain images, um, just some keyword search um, terms would help as well. And look, if I had a flight of fancy and I was overcome with vanity and did want a copy of that picture, yes. tell, me how I'd, tell me how I'd go about getting it. That. Well, you could search by the date, so if you were aware of what the date was or what the occasion that was up at Parliament House, or if there was a subject term of your name, you could search on your name as well. And what will it cost me? And, and, and how do I it's get It's free, it yes. It's free? Yep, so what we'll be able to do is um, um, we are allowing the images to be used for commercial as well as non-commercial use. Um, and we have an email address, which is dpsdi at aph.gov. We would be able to um, send those mm. images, but eventually you would be able to download it from your um, PC at home as and, well. And what, uh, how many DPI will the average one be? So what resolution am I able to get? Is it low res, medium, high res? About 300 DPI. About 300 DPI, yes. which is good for most yes. publications. exactly. Yep. And if you wanted something a bit more superior, you would just make contact with the team and they could then offer you a higher DPI resolution that suited you or what file format you needed it in. And so everything, and we've got friends here from the archives today, yeah. um, if it's pre-1988, it's now all with archives. Most of it is with the archives, and I have got that series number here as well to look for those. It is... I'll just have a look. Well, we can... What we'll do is we'll get the both the email address yes. and that, and we'll have it on the screen for people that might want to make a record. Yes, um, of how to get those images. Yep. But in the next probably 12 to 18 months, there will be more publicly available and it will be more of a self-serve. But at this stage, it is just if you need to um, contact the team if you're after any certain images um, and we'll be able to service that. So between 88 and 96, it's still in mixed format? It's still in mixed format, yes. We have... Um, digitised quite a few and they are being ingested into the digital asset management system but some of them still um, aren't digital. And how are you making decisions about what will be publicly accessible and what ones like this that of course you'll ask everyone who features in it if they're happy to be in a public place with that. How do you make that decision? Yes, so with those, anything that's more um, official will definitely be in the public and then quite a few others if they haven't had permissions and um, they were in the background, we would actually be trying to seek permission. Sometimes it's quite difficult because the whereabouts or who the, the people are is unknown. And that's something we're weeding through at the moment with these 1.5 million images to get it down to a subset of about 50,000. And so if there's an image, for instance, I know of one where someone's going at the Mayor of Hornsby like this, 
and it does look a bit menacing and it doesn't bring credit to that person. Because it was taken by David and it's in Auspeg, will it then be accessible to the public? Something like that, we're still working some terms around. Um, we're starting with the collections we've done so far are those where we do have the permissions. And we haven't sort of got down into some of those other ones at this stage. And David, can I ask you, um, of all the Prime Ministers that you've photographed, was the 25th Prime Minister easier or harder to photograph than those that came either before him or after him? And just, just disregard that we're all here. We're just having a little chat. Every Prime Minister was unique in their own way. So each one did different things and, and um, yeah, there was no favourites. I was just doing my job, trying to record history, which I've always had an interest in. And yeah, just Mr Howard's got a, probably a bigger collection because we did, there was more years of them. So, yeah. 11 years, 8 months and 23 yeah. days. But was it the case there were times, and don't look at him, when he said, go away, don't photograph this, I don't... Or did you take a photograph of that, I'd, I'd prefer that not see no, the light of day? Um, you often pick up a vibe, but, yeah, there's a thing called a press secretary and um, they're often kind of... Well, Bream, Tony O'Leary. He's grumpy O'Leary. Yeah, so um, they would kind of... You could, you know, sell your, your idea to Tony, he would like you to do it. And I think, Tony, looking back, I mean, what is pictures of the day... You know, I know today's history. If you don't take the picture, you don't have the picture today. So it was one of those things that I think Tony was talking about more around September 11 that we should have had, you know, been allowed for more pictures. But it, we were kind of stuck in this. If you take it, you've got to give it to the media. So if you don't take it, it doesn't have to go to the media. So. And when you said that on that particular one where Mr Howard and uh, the President were together... If you'd taken photographs that would have shown you the security detail or those who are in the water, what subject are those... Uh, what arrangements to access to those photographs exist? Because you may have taken someone who's SAS or SF oh, or something like well, that. A lot of the times we keep a folder of, you know, images that are not to be released. A lot of the times I doubt you'd be able to identify the people that were in the background. And there's times that we don't take pictures or we, you know, we photograph them behind... So we can't, you know, faces aren't recognised in that. So. Were there any world leaders who were difficult and didn't want to be photographed or only by their own photographer? Uh, none that I can come across. I, you, you always find the other official photographer quite welcoming, especially that you're going to the White House, you would go in with their photographer and some days you're in there for 30 minutes and, um, yeah, it ends up, you know, you're walking around um, looking for pictures and I think one time... As I stepped back, I could feel a, a foot under my shoe, and, a, and then a shoulder, there was a hand came in my, and it was Colin Powell. As I walked back, <laughs> he'd walked towards me, and I kind of, you know, you know, we were both kind of watching different directions, but yeah, it was my first and only meeting with him. So, <laughs> yeah. And the, you know, the ability to walk backwards is often, a, a, you know, a great use for a photographer. So particularly have a tax policy. Yeah. But um, what about instances where the official photographer and the press photographer are not seeing eye to eye? And now you get special access, but what about them? Were there moments when it was tense? Yeah, they, often there was often just one position. There'd be one television and one official, one photographer would get in for a handshake. So <clears throat> it's so much easier nowadays with everything shot on digital. It's just a case of, you know, wi fi it to your phone and... The images, you know, social media is totally different to Mr Howard's days. But um, there's often those, you know, discussions. I've, with another Prime Minister once, we, I was only one in this event, and the images were sent to the two photographers, and they never used it. And they, um, needless to say, a couple of the journals kicked the backsides for not releasing the pictures. The TVs first started running it, and um, the the, the newspapers were saying, where's the picture? And yeah, it was the two photographers sat on it, not releasing it. So the final question, let me ask. The famous picture of the Gippsland gun rally, which was taken by Ray Strange, Ray Strange of yeah. The Australian, was that considered a political event, therefore one you'd not attend? Because um, it just seems to be the... Per like, who could get behind the Prime Minister wearing a bulletproof yeah. vest? He's in a privileged position. Why isn't that you? Why is it him? And how did that play out? At the time, we only did really... We didn't do much domestic with Mr Howard at the time. 
our kind of, we're only permitted within Parliament House, was our, except for the overseas things we're actually doing for Mr Howard's uh, department at the time. And I think Ray went down to cover it, the, um, the, the, the gun uh, thing, and Ray, um, Ray just saw the opportunity, you know, noticed Mr Howard wearing the, uh, the jacket, and you, know, it was, you could see the ribs on it sticking through, and he took the opportunity to um, take the picture. But I'm kind of thinking, I think um, Michael Danby was talking about being down in Launceston for the... Um, when Mr Howard was walking through, all of a sudden, we're on, the media was in this scrum, and all of a sudden there was this red cross came up in Mr Howard's, and um, his head policeman was all in a panic, and I was saying, it's OK, it's just the new infrared focus on a camera at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think... Um, I think your police, your head of police was a bit, you know, and that's why I had to reassure him. It's same as this same beam was the same thing. Every time you'd step in an elevator, the doors would shut, and the elevators had a, a, a beam as well. So it would cut across the beam, and the poor parliamentarian would be stuck between opening and closing doors. <laughs> well, on that note, can I say that if you've, you've not been aware of this asset before, you now are, you make use of it, and I can't think of two better people in our Commonwealth to curate it, which is Liz and uh, David, to get you enthused about it. So please thank them this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.